Hi, and welcome to the series premiere of Gay News, where like camp, if you didn't come a little gay, you left a little gay. I'm Hank Starr. And I'm Oha Lopez. And here are tonight's top stories. In preparation for possibly contentious election results, Joe Biden has put 4,000 attorneys on standby in Florida because he knows the only way to combat this level of batshit is to assemble a sweaty rage army of people who own tigers in their backyards. Who'd have thunk it? Of course the hero of 2020 is the Florida man. In the same week, Pope Francis appointed the first African-American cardinal, Wilton Gregory, he also stated his support for same-sex civil unions. Whoa, 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 whoa buddy. Whoa, slow down, whoa, whoa, big whoa, guy. Whoa, slow whoa. down. Next week, he's going to come out as being in a thruple with Hugo Weaving and a dove. A report by the New York Times called out WhatsApp for failing to curb false political news and propaganda in Spanish. But I don't know what they're talking about, because my Aunt Renata recently shared an insightful article about how El Chupacabras is sleeping with Bernie Sanders, leaving La Señora Chupacabras en su casa sola con los niños. And my aunt's a microbiologist. In a campaign video to a conservative gay group, Melania Trump defended her husband as being pro-gay, which kind of reminds me of the time that I indulged the affections of a guy on my college improv team in exchange for sandwiches. Do I regret it? Sandwiches. Does he regret it? Yes. But this is what I looked like in college, so he kinda did it to himself. Take note, Republicans. Jaegermeister launched a call to action to save the last 15 lesbian bars in the U.S. Jaeger, lesbians don't want to go out even before COVID. <laughs> they want to garden each other's vaginas and build catios. In my professional opinion, if you want to lure a lesbian to your bar, you have to turn it into a hardware store with an open mic night. It took Republicans a record 30 days to nominate and confirm Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court for a lifetime commitment. Replied all the lesbians in the world, Oh, you're taking it slow. These have been our top stories. The gay icon. We all know the recipe. They're the perfect combination of over-the-top, always dressed up, self-involved narcissist with a heart of gold. And rarely gay. Think Dolly Parton's quick wit and self-deprecation, Liza Minnelli's kitten wigs, or Mariah Carey's memory. But... Why are most of our gay icons straight and dictated by white gay male culture? It feels like at some point a bunch of them got together and said, you're ours, Barbara Streisand. And yes, our adopted gay divas are sharp and ready to defend themselves. Because we as gay people, well, we've always had to defend ourselves. We say the joke first, we break the ice, we get to it before the others do. I mean, yes, Ryan Murphy's been making 57 shows every year, and I do watch all of them, don't get me wrong. But the people dictating who these icons have traditionally been are all members of the most accepted letter in the alphabet. It's like everyone is in line, and we let all the gay men through, but there's still a line of people around the block trying to get in. So when the dust settles and the Palm Spring gays are on their porches with their golden doodles, where do the rest of us go? See, the face of queers in America is changing, and we've officially gone from 1 in 20 people know a gay to everybody knowing a tiny gay part of themselves. I went from, uh, I think my aunt is gay, to I would not say no. We went from an unspoken scissoring of Xena to an all-out Lena Waithe in a gay poncho at the Met Gala. I mean, even my family used to ask me, you're bringing your roommate for Thanksgiving, Oha, and now they're like, they both carve the turkey. I set the electric car for setting on high. Whatever. But we went from watching the straights cancel Ellen when she came out to pretty much basically canceling her ourselves because we've got fresher gays in the back. So what makes a lesbian icon, a queer, a trans icon? That's what we're here to explore. The bravest of us have always been the ones on the fringes, the most gay looking or sounding or intersectional, AKA the world thinks everything is wrong with you. In our experience, if you're pushing the boundaries just by being yourself, then the world that we've defined for ourselves is too small. Gay News is here to make it just a little bit bigger. Earlier this month, we sent our correspondent, Kim Iheme, out to see how people were holding up during quarantine. We now take you to our segment, Kim at an Intersection. Hi, I'm Kim Iheme, and I'm somewhere between a street and an avenue, and this is Kim at an intersection. 
Chicago's gay neighborhood, Andersonville. For some reason, our social distancing poll got all the attention. There's finally something big enough for all the thirsty bottoms in this neighborhood. I can make this this weird if y'all ask. You know what? Hank would touch me with a six foot pole, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> we asked the public queer trivia questions and how they've been staying busy during Rona. Oh, we're meeting our son. Yeah, I'm gonna let you do this. I, I'm sorry, my son is lost one He's block lost. over. Hello. Hannah and Mary Pickle have found their son. What are you doing today? Um, we're just hanging out. We just went to the cemetery, having like a spooky day. Oh, oh. We like walked around the cemetery. There were I deer there. Someone passed. Oh so no! Sorry. One of these is not a Chicago gay bar. Also, y'all don't look 21, so I know you don't know these, <laughs> but use your best guess. My sister used to go. A. Jackhammer. B. Big Chicks. C. Manhandler Saloon. Or D. Cubbyhole. Cubbyhole. You are right! What the hell? Hey, what is this? Hi, I'm Kim at an intersection, and I'm here with Bella DeBall. <laughs> I haven't had anything this big in my face in seven months. <laughs> Oh, great. And I'm here with Dr. Chanel Mercedes Benz Obama Kamala Harris Biden for 2020 president. I'm here with a very, very powerful woman. What you been doing this time? I've been reading. I've been reading in life. I'm a teacher, so I've been what reading. Grade? What grade? Fifth grade, y'all. Who's your friend? Whether you're reading at home, walking in the graveyard, or finding your son, 2020 in Andersonville has made it clear we can find ways to connect even from a distance. A special thanks to the drag queens at Hamburger Mary's for spending some time with us. We actually found out that the Hamburger Mary's in Andersonville is now closed, but they won't be gone forever. They're just waiting until the spring to find a new location to reopen up, and hopefully the pandemic will be a little bit better. And now, it's time for sports. you sports. With the world experiencing so many unknowns right now, people are turning to the stars for guidance. With her reading is our astrology correspondent, Cahill Kardashian. Scorpio. The sun burns as fiercely as your most recent STI as it enters your sign October 22nd through November 21st. Just in time for you to not ruin Thanksgiving with your constant need to be in control. Scorpio. Contrary to popular belief, Scorpio is a water sign. Your personality is so watered down, you rely on your face and body. When a Scorpio is at their best, they demonstrate unparalleled empathy, depth, and commitment to being a second-rate bikini rag bitch. Scorpio. Conflict will arise this month, revealing the darkest part of your magical psyche. Yes. Also, you will get your trans. Your love life looks magnetic as Venus pumps and dumps Scorpio on the 7th. You are psychosexually unstable, and Aquarius is the war criminal of the Zodiac, making you a perfect match made in pure hell. Yes. Attributes of the Scorpio. Passionate, persistent, forward thinking, and confident enough to send you a dick pic, knowing full and well that you're at your grandmother's cryogenic freezing ceremony. Scorpio. Scorpios like loyalty, kindness, and hiding the salami. Scorpios hate lies, fake people, 
and the fact that your friend you also used to hang out with DM'd your other friend a keto recipe on Instagram at 1.30 in the morning. No, seriously, what the fuck was up with that? The central conflict of Scorpio is that their feelings strengthen and drive them. However, their mutability makes them feel a little out of control sometimes. Well, I'm here to remind you to follow your impulsive gut and your false sense of intuition. Put on that adult diaper and drive 15 hours to assassinate your boyfriend's wife. Go for it! And remember, reach for the stars. You'll never be one. Scorpio. Thank you, K-Hole, for that informative journalistic report. And just a reminder, astrology may not be based on science, but neither is religion. I'm a Scorpio. It was just my birthday. Boy, howdy, the seasons sure are changing. And with that, boy, you don't know whether to wear a tank top or a sweater. Here with our five day forecast is Evan Starkweather. Evan? Hey there, I'm Evan Starkweather, and this is the five day forecast, sponsored by Geico. When you're here, you're insured. Current conditions are spotty, but with an overall sunny disposition. As we transition through this uncertain season, though, watch out for some shifting winds, which may bring in some unexpected overcast skies. So remember, like I always say, layer up, they'll never see what's underneath. Looking at the week, we've got some gorgeous conditions on Monday morning. Temperate with clear skies and open expectations. Heading into the evening, it looks like things will cool off, realizing that there are fully five identical days to crawl through before the weekend. Let's look at the map. Now, as you might expect for the season, we've got some high pressure systems rolling throughout the week. Mix that with some hazardous breathing conditions and you might find yourself staring at your front door wondering, is it really worth going outside today? Looking back at historical levels, nothing is the same and everything is chaos, which may make you wonder, this can't be my life. This isn't happening to me, but I'm here to tell you, it is. Looks like it'll all come to a head Thursday with some isolated tearfall. Depending on where you're at spiritually, we're talking anywhere from half an inch to just enough to drown in. The calm after the storm may have you thinking that conditions have cleared up for the week, but be careful! Between the precipitation and foggy memories of when you were young and thought you'd be married by now! Charles, 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 Charles. We have been together for seven years. Just propose already. You give me marriage and I will give you head whenever hey, buddy, you want. Evan, whenever, Evan. Where, wherever. We are predicting some volatility and potentially unsafe driving conditions. Like riding with mom to your bassoon lesson after she accidentally double dosed her Zola buckle up buttercup. And remember, I don't make the weather. I also don't report it. All right, back to you. Thanks, buddy. We hope you're okay. For our main story tonight, we wanted to talk to you about some hard news. It's news that's hard. Hard news. Hard news. Hard news. We're moving out of wedding season and into cuffing season, and nowhere is that more apparent than the bench of the Supreme Court, where in early October, Clarence Thomas, along with Samuel Alito, took the opportunity to vibe check all the gays looking for love, saying in a dissent that wasn't even part of a case that the 2015 decision legalizing gay marriage had gone too far and that he'd like the court to reconsider it and possibly strike it down. <laughs> what? You want to take away our right to marry? Why? Oh, right. This is 2020 and we're living in the darkest of timelines. But Thomas's statement has particular resonance with me as earlier this year, I got engaged. Yes, I'm getting married, hopefully. And initially we wanted to wait until the pandemic was over and we could have a big party and show off our supreme happiness in front of everyone. But now thanks to Thomas, we're considering just heading down to the courthouse and getting that paper to be safe. So while straight couples are postponing their weddings due to COVID, 
I'm saying to my fiance, Shannon, get that bridal mask on, baby, because we're getting hitched. And that's sad because I want to give Shannon the world. A few months ago, we made a wish list for things we wanted at our wedding. It was fun, love, puppets, musical numbers. Now our wedding wish list is just one, get the paper so we can buy a house and visit each other in the hospital. And part of what makes this conversation so complicated is that the meaning of marriage is subjective. It has meant so many things through the years. A way for churches to keep us procreating, a transaction to ensure that the family business was viable, and of course, the simplest of these, a bond of everlasting, beautiful, holy love forever and ever. And marriage isn't even made for queer people. I mean, especially gender queer people. Like, I'm trans, my pronouns are they, them, so I'm not a bride, I'm not a groom. Am I a broom? I mean, I have been known to sweep people off their feet. Get it, Oha? Sweep. Look, even if there isn't a word for me, I still want to be married. And a whole lot of us do. Yes, for beautiful, everlasting, holy love forever and ever, but also rights. Rights that heteros take for granted. When asked why they got married, LGBT Americans were two times more likely than those in the general public, aka the straights, to cite legal rights and benefits as a very important reason for getting married. And honestly, I am also in it for the dowry because little known fact, Shannon comes with 17 goats and a haunted British manor house. The changing nature of marriage is called out directly in the 2015 Obergefell v. Hodges decision, which stated, changed understandings of marriage are characteristic of a nation where new dimensions of freedom become apparent to new generations. And this statement is statistically proven. Support for same-sex marriage has increased in nearly all demographic group. And sure, while only 29% of white evangelical Christians support it, that is nearly double of the 15% that supported it in 2009. The majority of religious people do support gay marriage, but I guess we still struggle here in the U.S. to see any religion outside evangelical Christianity as legitimate. Also, this was brought up by Clarence Thomas, a justice so notorious for silence you could confuse him for a mid-level executive at the Weinstein Company circa 2015. I mean, this guy literally did not speak on the bench for a decade. His statement came out as the court was denying to hear a case from Kim Davis. You remember that county clerk in Kentucky who was complaining that she had to choose between her job issuing marriage licenses and her faith? So in a classic, well, you guys did this to yourself and now this white Christian lady is suffering for it, Thomas stated that it's, quote, getting increasingly difficult to participate in society without running afoul of Obergefell and other anti-discrimination laws. How? To paraphrase, as more people get rights, it's harder for me to discriminate against them. Bummer. Or, this gem from him, the court's decision would threaten the religious liberty of the many Americans who believe that marriage is a sacred institution between one man and one woman. Again, I ask you, how? Are we all married to each other? Are the mason jar centerpieces at my cottage core reception interrupting your communion? Are my vows actually a satanic ritual that will open a portal between the underworld, creating all out war between good and evil and ushering in in revelation? Which isn't that what you wanted in the first place? Yeah, I was a horse girl and now my trans ass is riding seven of them. So I guess you could say that Justice Thomas finds the gay marriage decision problematic. And the main point he brings up to support this is that while the 2015 ruling acknowledges that people with religious beliefs can be decent and honorable, he says it also suggests that those same people are bigoted. And to that I say, yes. It is totally possible to be a good person and still have problematic beliefs. I'm sure Kim Davis's church choir director thinks she has a lovely vibrato. Her next door neighbor probably loves her peach cobbler. People are not all one thing. It is possible to be both decent and an asshole. Look, I'm a pastor's kid. I thought a lot about this, a lot. I grew up surrounded by people who I love and who I, in most contexts, would call decent and honorable. I also know that those qualities are not mutually exclusive from bigotry, but that doesn't mean that bigotry is forever, which, by the way, is the new slogan from KKK Jewelers. When I was in high school, one of my most vivid memories is my mom declining to sign a petition for Wisconsin to pass same-sex marriage because of her beliefs. Last Christmas, she quilted my fiancé this pillow. 
In a decade, my mom, a woman whose faith is central to her life, went from not speaking to me when I came out to being genuinely excited to welcome Shannon into our family. The point is people can change. That just like the concept of marriage and our nation's ideas of freedom, change has to happen because that's what humanity is, constant change. So what now? And why is this coming up now? Well, RBG is gone, Coney Barrett is confirmed, and that makes the court decidedly right wing. Thomas's statement is political theater and an insight into what's coming. On November 4th, the court is arguing the case Fulton v. City of Philadelphia, a case that could potentially affect the ability for same-sex couples to become foster parents. How the court rules on this may be an indication of things to come. We've seen rollbacks of protections since Trump took office, and his presidency has already had a lasting impact on the court. No matter what happens with this election, we need to be ready to fight for our freedom. Will the decision be overturned? Maybe. Maybe not. But there will be people with the power to overturn it in the position to do so. And there will likely be big exceptions made to the marriage decision for those with religious beliefs. This could mean the elimination of visitation and medical decision rights in religiously affiliated hospitals or allowances of discrimination in businesses. So, with all this in mind, I'm issuing a poll. Should Shannon and I get married now? Bear in mind, my last name is going to be Golden Star. Golden Star! That hashtag deserves a wedding with a chocolate fountain. Let us know what you think at thisisgaynews at gmail.com. We'd also love to hear from you if this is going to have an impact in your life. Chances are, if you're watching this, even if you aren't planning on getting married, it's going to. And before we go, I just wanted to say something to Justice Thomas, who I know is a big fan of this show. Just as a reminder, I wanted to quote your favorite book, one that I know very well as a pastor's kid. Titus 1.16 says, They profess to know God, but deny him by their works. A.K.A. No backsies, Thomas. This has been Hard News. Hard News. Hard News. Hard news. And that's our show. But we do want to address some concerns that have been coming up about our program. We do know that this is a time of social reckoning across the world and our country. And uh, as a brand new organization, we just wanted to tell you that we are sorry for our past mistakes. You know, we are complicit and we are preemptively canceling ourselves. You know, if not for anything else, then for the optics of it. We've created an apology letter, a hodgepodge of different apology letters from theaters from around the world. And we mean every single word. We are enacting foundational, radical changes to our organization. You know what? Let's stop talking about it and let's just do it, damn it. (sighs) That feels good. I feel so much more included now. That was Gay News. Thank you for joining. My name is Oha Lopez. And I'm Hank Starr.